I've been in a mood to shoot 45 over 9mm recently, and it occurred to me I hadn't done a video on one of my favorite guns in my collection, the M45A1, so sit back and enjoy. The M45A1 is a full-size government profile 1911 made by Colt and it's chambered in 45 ACP. It was adopted in 2012 by the United States Marine Corps and it features a nice flat dark earth type finish, a 5 inch barrel and a beefy Picatinny rail. This one has had about a thousand rounds through it and it's a very special gun to me because it was my first big purchase after getting a new job and changing states. The sights on here are the Trijicon Novak night sights. These are three dot white front and rear, and they work great. They're very simple and straightforward. I don't really have anything to add, but not in a bad way. It's just because they're very easy to use. The light I have on here is the Surefire X300UA. And it's a great light, nothing that I can add that hasn't been said on a bunch of other reviews already, but it uh, works very well and it's very capable. The switch is a little stiffer than on my Streamlight TLR1, but that's really not a big deal. The trigger on the 1911 is great and is definitely something that took me a little bit of getting used to, especially coming from my Glock which has a very sluggish trigger in comparison. I really like the crisp reset of the 1911 trigger and it's definitely something I look forward to shooting. The grips on here are VZ grips that came with a gun, and I've seen reviews where people would call these aggressive where they chew up your hands, but I wouldn't go that far. These are rough at best, but you're not going to have calluses or anything. I do like them and aesthetically they work very well with the gun, but I do wish that the grip itself also had some serrations in the front strap instead of just being smooth. At the same time, it's nothing that practice can't overcome. For magazines, I have three different types. All of them are from Wilson Combat. Two seven round mags came with the gun, and then I bought several eight round magazines and a couple 10 rounders. I primarily stick with the 8 just because it's a good blend of capacity for what a 45 1911 can give in capacity, and in footprint as well. There are no feeding issues with any of these mags, and here I'm just showing the different profile between the 7, 8, then also the 10 rounders. If I were to use this gun for home defense, I would definitely opt for the 10 round magazines. I like having the extra capacity, and at that point footprint doesn't matter as much. At the same time, I have a Glock 17 which has even more capacity, so that would be my primary. But if I were to use this, I would opt for the 10 round magazines. So what do I like about this gun and what are some things that I dislike? Well, in terms of what I like about it, this gun does have a lot of emotional value to me. As I mentioned before, it was my first big purchase after some life events for me, and so it's uh, always going to have that sentimental value. I would also say too, the gun looks great too. Like aesthetically, I think the flat dark earth and the grips are great, but beyond just how it looks and the emotions, 45 is a very proven lethal caliber, so there's something to be said about that. However, that does also segue into some of the, I wouldn't call them dislikes, but let's just say dislikes. On the topic of 45 as a caliber versus 9mm and that whole realm of things, with any 1911 review, you're always going to have magazine capacity come up, which I do understand. So hot take, and I am really overgeneralizing here, but I would say typically what I've seen is that for 1911s, whether those are in 45 or 9 millimeter, you tend to have a more expensive gun, which is heavier, harder to maintain, arguably based on its design, with a lower magazine capacity. Whereas if you take a more modern gun, which is maybe you know one of the polymer ones, like a Glock or a Smith & Wesson Shield Plus, you have something which is lighter, cheaper for ammo and the gun itself, easier to maintain, it may be double the magazine capacity. That doesn't mean the 1911 is a bad gun or a poor choice in any way, but it is something to consider given the other options out there that you could get some other guns too. It is also worth noting though that you know people have been shooting 1911s far before Glocks or any of the striker fired polymer guns are out there, and they're also still used today. 
And I think that if this gun's design is over 100 years old and it still has a lot of customer demand, it must be because it brings something to the table. So don't want to totally crap on the 1911. Some drawbacks, but also clearly it's still a good choice. So with this all said and done, hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you found something useful or at least entertaining, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.